And that is a powerful, powerful, powerful statement to live by and to be able to have your finances set up. Because I don't know about you, but for me, I do a lot of what I do, not for me, but for my kids, to make sure that I'm changing the focus of my life, to make sure uh, that I'm helping create a better life for my kids. I'm a big believer that we were blessed with the beautiful responsibility of leaving the world better than what we inherited, right? And, and I take that extremely seriously and that's why I do what I do. And so when you look at utilizing whole life insurance as that emergency fund, as that rainy day fund, it also can be a self-completing plan where if something happens, maybe your spouse gets a million dollars of death benefit, maybe a million and a half, maybe like whatever the number is for you, it's all gonna be relative to what you're putting in. Hey, what's going on Cashflow Hackers? It's Chris with Life 180 and today we're gonna to be talking about the pros and the cons of cash value life insurance. And so I know I do a lot of talking about how amazing life insurance is when you utilize it properly as a foundational cornerstone asset in your financial life, however, there are some negative components to it as well. Especially, it's something that I've been, I've been doing a lot of thinking about lately is that there's so much just stuff going on online. Like the, the, the more TikTok is growing, the more people that are coming onto YouTube and doing content, what's happening is there's just this plethora of bad information that's being shared. And so I wanna kinda take a step back, look at it down from a high level, and, and kind of look at the cons of what's happening right now in the industry, what the cons of how kind of the bad information relates to the actual products and how they work, and then also not ignore what some of the pros are at the same time with kind of the environment that we're in right now in the current economic environment is what I mean by that. And so um, let's get into this and just for fun, let's start with the cons. So the first con I would say is just the fact that your expectations with the policy performance are not really in alignment with reality. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, a lot of times uh, life insurance agents are not educated enough. They don't know how to communicate what's going on uh, with the policies, how they function, what role they're really gonna play in somebody's life. And so what happens is they lean on the illustration whether you're talking about whole life insurance or whether you're talking about index universal life or even traditional UL or VUL, it doesn't really matter. Any life insurance illustration and that uh, an agent is selling you saying, hey, look at this illustration. This is why you should buy this is because of this illustration. I would tell you run the other way as fast as you can because your expectations are probably not gonna be met. Uh, and and what, what I mean by that is like, listen, over the past decade, Every policy that was illustrated 14 years ago has performed worse than what it was illustrated because we've been um, going through this declining interest rate environment and it's put a lot of stress on the general funds of the life insurance company's account, general account. And so that's gonna have a negative consequence on both whole life insurance and index universal life policies, which are the two most common cash value policies sold in the market right now. And so, for a second, what I wanna do is I wanna talk about Index Universal Life. Index Universal Life is being sold as this tax-free income alternative. And they're trying to tell people that you can invest in this alternative and it's, it's, it's gonna have upside potential, downside protection, all is gonna be well. You can multiply your retirement income on this asset. It's gonna give you all these benefits and there seems to be no real downside and that's how they sell it. And then they show you this illustration and at the end of the day, what's gonna happen is your, the, the policy is not gonna perform the way that they illustrated to you. And so my encouragement is get your expectations in alignment with reality and understand the moving components of the policy. Understand all the fine print of the contract, where it can go sideways on you, how you need to fund it properly, how policy loans work inside and out, understand the cap rates, the participation rates, the spread charges, um, all, all the cost of insurance charges and admin charges and what can be changed, what is guaranteed, what is stable, and understand what role this asset is supposed to play in your financial life. If you're leaning on it to do too much, my guess is you're gonna wind up disappointed. So the second con to cash value life insurance is it's life insurance, so you gotta qualify for it right? I love, I'm not that the life insurance component is bad, but you got to qualify for it. So, you know, if you're, if you're not healthy, uh, if you've made some poor decisions, unfortunately, sometimes, uh, you know, the fact that maybe 
you're overweight or you've got diabetes or something like that. It doesn't mean you can't get the life insurance component, but because we're always looking to optimize these contracts for max efficient cash value growth, sometimes if you're unhealthy or for whatever reason, whether it's your fault or not, sadly, the life insurance is gonna be more expensive and that can have a negative consequence on the cash value. And so there are ways around this. You can insure a spouse, you can insure your kids, you can do all sorts of things to get creative to make this work. Um, if you like the concept as a whole, you can, you can make it work. But what I would say is, is just know that this is something that you have to qualify for. I always tell people getting these policies and designing them properly, once you understand the benefits of them from a long-term perspective, it's not a right, it literally is a gift for you to be able to do this. It, it, it is an extreme, like just a bonus for you to be able to run your life through these contracts. Do not take it for granted that you're just gonna be able to go and do it. You gotta go through a process, you gotta go through medical underwriting, and that can be a little bit of a tricky scenario to kind of navigate for people that don't like to deal with you know getting their blood drawn or having to pee in a cup or something of that nature so the fact that it's life insurance even though it's not a big deal there's a lot of benefits to the life insurance component as an ancillary benefit while that's the case um it, it's one of those situations where you know it's just some hoops to jump through to get through the process but once you do it uh, i can't think of anything any other asset that's more worth it when you do it properly so the third con is that it's a forced savings plan. Now, what do I mean by that? Because that doesn't sound super negative. This is actually kind of a pro and a con all wrapped into one, but I'm gonna focus on the con element of it because that's the section of this video that we're in. It's a con because of the fact that oftentimes agents try to oversell to a person who's looking to utilize this in their life, utilize a cash value life insurance policy in their life. What happens is the client overextends themselves. Right? And so what happens is they either are, are in this policy and they have to take a step backwards and they don't fund it properly or the policy is designed improperly and the flexibility doesn't exist. I've seen things happen negatively on both sides of the equation. A lot of times in whole life insurance, policies are not designed properly for cash accumulation. Policies are not designed properly for, uh, for the flexibility that you need should something happen to you and you have to have a little flexibility uh, with the premium payment. If you don't fund it properly, design it properly, and, and have a, a, a design of the policy so you can kind of weather the storms and it can ebb and flow, and make sure that you understand you're not stretching yourself to every dollar in your life flowing through the policy. Because if you do that, you're, you're putting yourself in a position where you're just increasing the risk. And the whole purpose of utilizing properly designed whole life insurance contract is to eliminate that risk and to increase your chances of success and, and increase a predictable uh, element of your wealth potential, right? Like that is what you're doing this for is a foundational asset in your life. And if this asset is ever adding more risk to your life, then it's, you know, uh, it, it, well, in general, if it's adding more risk to your life, it, that's a problem. And so you need to be really looking at it through that lens. So the con here is don't get overextended and, and put too much of your money into the policy and make sure that if you do, uh, that you can handle that forced savings plan. Do it on a level that you're committed to and make sure that uh, that flexibility is built in at the same time. So the fourth con of cash value life insurance is that it's just oversold, honestly. Um, unfortunately, there's this is where, when I was talking at the beginning of the video, all the conversations on TikTok and YouTube and like all these guys that are, people out there that are selling this as the end all be all solution to everything in your life. I got news for you. There's no financial product in the world that's gonna solve every single one of your problems. It just doesn't exist. And so it's oversold because of the fact that maybe sometimes you're just not ready for it. Um, I, I see too often, uh, as much as I believe in this, as much as I believe a properly designed whole life insurance contract should be a part of every single person's life at some point in time, and I truly, in my heart of hearts, in my soul believe that, doesn't mean that right now is the right time for you. Maybe you have a situation where you need to eliminate consumer debt, right? That toxic debt that's holding you back. You need to increase your cash flow and do some things to improve your financial efficiency. It doesn't make sense for you to be jamming a ton of money into your life insurance contract 
uh, earning two and a half, three percent, four percent over the next you know five, six, seven years, while you got thirty, forty thousand dollars of of credit card debt that you're paying eighteen percent on. That none of that makes any sense. It doesn't make sense to do that while you've got a a, a car payment that you're paying eight percent on. I just saw an article the other day. Auto loans, the average auto loan right now is going up to about 8.8%. That's insane to me that these things are happening. So if you have that kind of debt, it doesn't make sense to be you know, doing all these things off to the side, focusing on your cash growth on, and, and focusing on building your financial foundation the way that I talk about in my Life 180 Pyramid video. That doesn't make any sense. What makes sense is you, you go through, you work with a coach that can coach you through eliminating your debt, increasing the financial efficiency in your life, putting yourself in a position where you can improve that cash flow, and all the while, because you probably want the life insurance, because it's definitely best practices to lock in your insurability, because that's one of the biggest risks that you have, because let's face it, our health right now, as, as we are, you're probably never gonna be healthier than you are right now, right? And so to be able to lock that in, go out, get a convertible, term insurance policy, work on your debt, work on your finances, work with a coach, get that all squared away, but all the while you're gonna get the life insurance that you need to protect your family, you're gonna have it at a fraction of the price, and you're gonna have a guaranteed ability to convert that term insurance policy to a permanent insurance policy when it is time for you and your family. And if it takes two years, if it takes three years, five years, eight years, Make sure whatever your situation looks like, consult with an agent, go through, figure out what that looks like. And this is one of the things that I, you know, I coach all my Life 180 coaches to con consider and contemplate as they're guiding their clients through this process is you have to take a look at what this looks like for you. So if you have somebody that's overselling you on life insurance, solving all your problems, paying off all your debt through the policy while, you know, while you're struggling with cash flow in the meantime, I'm gonna tell you to take a step back, be really, really cautious about that conversation uh, and understand that chances are, if it seems too good to be true, it probably is. So the fifth con of cash value life insurance is it's often misrepresented. Now, I, I just said it was oversold. Now I'm gonna talk about the misrepresentation about what life insurance is meant to do in your life. Life insurance companies as a whole for 200 years have been doing one thing and one thing alone better than any other financial institution on the face of the earth, and that is preserving the purchasing power of your money. What does that mean in layman's terms? It means they're basically gonna help you beat inflation with your money. That is what they do from a long-term perspective. Now, we've got 9% inflation right now in the United States. I don't know what it is around the rest of the world, but I know it's elevated, right? And so when we look at inflation right now, sure, a whole life policy that's getting 5.2% right now is not gonna beat inflation at 9%, but we gotta be thinking long-term. And when we think about our life in terms of 30-year chunks, life insurance companies are gonna manage that risk, manage the purchasing power of our safe, liquid, accessible capital, and that's what they're gonna do. So the biggest misrepresentation of life insurance companies is saying, oh, and this is where IUL comes in, is where they go out and they say, uh, we got this upside potential, you're gonna be attached to an index, you're gonna be participating in the performance of the market, all these things, nothing could be further from the truth. I've created a whole playlist on Index Universal Life training because simply put, Index Universal Life is simply a traditional universal life contract with options, strategies attached to it. And if you understand how the options work, you understand that, you're, that the performance of the index really doesn't have much to do with the actual performance of the policy. When you wrap your head around that and firmly understand it, then you can actually make a more educated decision. This goes back to what I was talking about a couple points ago, where it's like, you need to understand all the nuances in the contract. If you're just reading the illustration and looking at the ledger and look at the numbers, it's smoke and mirrors. You have to understand why these things are happening, how the policies are actually credited the money, how you participate with the insurance company or are a profit center of the life insurance company. Understanding those components is the most important thing that you need to understand. So when I say they're misrepresented, what happens is there's a lot of information on TikTok, on YouTube, on Instagram right now by Index Universal Life agents taking and saying, hey, you need to use cash value life insurance because that's what Disney did, Walt Disney did, that's what JCPenney did, it's what the Rockefellers did. I got news for you. All those people did use cash value life insurance and guess what? They used whole life insurance. 
They used properly designed, mutually held whole life insurance and they did it because as a participating mutually held company and as a policy holder with those companies, you are a business partner effectively. You're like a shareholder participating in the success of that company. With an IUL, most of those companies are stock companies. They are uh, policies, even if they're not stock companies, because there are some mutual companies that sell IUL, but even if they are, you are a profit center for the company. Just go read the contract, read the illustration, read all the details. And my problem with the misrepresentation is they're trying to take all the good in the 200 years of history from whole life insurance and they're taking the good from that they're ignoring the negative of an IUL of the downside risks that go with it and you're they're they're selling it as if all these people utilize this product that they didn't use at all to be able to achieve a financial result and if you fall into that trap it's going to wind up and turning around and biting you and it, it, it's it's going to be a really negative consequence for you so make sure that if you're looking at it from from the perspective of being sold that way. Make sure you really take a look at the contract once again and make sure it's not being misrepresented to you. And make sure you question your agent and they be, they're they able to have a really clean, concise explanation for what they're talking about. Because my guess is they're just regurging, re regurgitating information that one of their trainers told them and they don't even really know what they're talking about. So the other way that it's misrepresented is the fact that, think about it, Let's common sense goes a long ways in this situation. The way IULs are sold is that you got this upside potential, downside protection. So they're saying you can get 6.4, 6.5%, 6 even 6%, 5.8%, whatever it is, it's a, a big number compared to what is actually gonna happen. And they're selling you this because they, they figured out this, this strategy that's able to give you this upside potential and downside protection through the use of options. Well, I got news for you. Who's selling those options? Wall Street, right? So there's two components to this. A, if the life insurance was you know, gonna be able to get you six and a half percent and they're only getting 4% in their general fund, why wouldn't they be doing that for themselves? They could go out and get six and a half percent if it was such a great strategy, not have the insurance charges, not have all the fees and everything that go along with it. Heck, they should be able to get seven and a half or eight percent if you back it all out, right? But they're not doing it, why? Because it doesn't work that way. Secondly, most of these companies, they just put on, once again, let's put on our common sense hats here for just one second and go in and say, okay, who are most of these companies that are selling these IULs? They're Midwestern companies, smaller companies. Some of them are good size, but still small in relative comparison to Wall Street, right? And so in what world do we think that these companies are gonna come up with some strategy, attach it to a, a financial vehicle that's got a, some costs that go with it, right? And somehow they're gonna outperform a strategy that Wall Street is doing. And it's a product that Wall Street is selling them. So I promise you, if this were so good, there'd be an investment component on Wall Street that you'd be able to just invest in to get you this return. Go look for it, it doesn't exist. And, and, and this is where I say, if you just use a little bit of common sense, the results go a long ways. Once again, do not let the misrepresentation of what life insurance should be doing in your life let you step into a bear trap with your personal finances. All right, so those are the cons, uh, but here's the deal. I can't do a full video just talking negatively about cash value life insurance. I gotta talk a bit about a little bit of the positives. So let me just rip through these really quickly. The first positive is that it's a self-completing plan. One of the beautiful parts is you gotta save money anyway. You gotta have an emergency fund and an opportunity fund. So I'm a big believer the best and only place to do that, the most efficient place for sure to do that is inside of a properly designed whole life insurance contract. Why do I say that? Because it's a self-completing plan. Think about it. If you're saving $10,000 a year, three years from now, something tragic happens to you and you die and you got a spouse and kids, your spouse and kids have 30 grand sitting in an account and that's it. If you are saving inside of a whole life insurance contract, it's self-completing because there's life insurance attached to it. So yeah, you got that money sitting in there that you have liquidity use and control of, but at the same time, if something tragic happens to you, it's self-completing. Everything, what you want to happen will happen when you want it to happen, whether you're here to see it or not. That's what I always tell people. And that is a powerful, powerful, powerful statement to live by and to be able to have your finances set up. Because I don't know about you, but for me, I do a lot of what I do, not for me, but for my kids, to make sure that I'm changing the focus of my life, to make sure uh, that I'm helping create a better life for my kids. I'm a big believer that we were 
blessed with the beautiful responsibility of leaving the world better than what we inherited, right? And, and I take that extremely seriously and that's why I do what I do. And so when you look at utilizing whole life insurance as that emergency fund, as that rainy day fund, it also can be a self-completing plan where if something happens, maybe your spouse gets a million dollars of death benefit, maybe a million and a half, maybe like whatever the number is for you, it's all gonna be relative to what you're putting in, but college could be paid for, you could have assets if, you're, if your spouses stay at home, you could, you could buy cash flowing real estate, they could buy cash flow real estate with it after, you could put it into an asset that's just kicking out cash flow, like dividend paying stocks or, you know, I mean, there's a lot of different things that you could do, it, do with it to create that lifestyle, but the whole purpose is, for me, when I die and something could happen tomorrow, right? I wanna make sure that my demise doesn't bring my family down with me. I wanna make sure that my vision, my goals for my kids, the life that they wanna live, that I, I aspire to help them accomplish, isn't gonna be negatively impacted by me going away. So the second positive of cash value life insurance are the living benefits inside of the policy, right? Like, so I, I share the story about my father-in-law all the time having access to the death benefit while you're alive and accelerating the death benefit to control your medical directive is a big deal. Uh, I, I know I'm a big believer, I'm not a big believer, I should say, in the Western world way of, of, of handling um, medicine and treatment of cancer and alternative stuff. I, I'm a big believer that uh, alternative treatments and natural treatments, the body's an amazing uh, just thing that has the ability to heal itself and so, Having that money, my father-in-law, I just shared, had stage four pancreatic cancer, right? And he was diagnosed with a seven and a half centimeter tumor on his pancreas and his liver. And they gave him three months to live and they wouldn't do anything for him. And I've done more videos where I've gotten into more depth on this. But what I will say is because of his ability to access capital and spend over $200,000 on alternative treatments, now, almost two years later, he's still alive when they said he'd be dead 18 months ago. He's still playing golf four times a week and he's still hanging out with his grandkids almost every single day. Like, and I can honestly say most people wouldn't be here still because they don't have the financial well-being and wherewithal to be able to handle coming out of pocket for that kind of medical treatment. Living benefits, accessing your, your life insurance death benefit while you're alive to be able to handle and control your medical directive is empowering, it's freeing, and, and it's gonna give you the ability to like actually show up differently in your life the way that you want to. So, and I can, and I can think about even on the negative side of this, I have a, a client um, who was one of my first clients, first death benefit, first situation that I ever had to deal with way back in the day. They got diagnosed with pancreatic cancer, ironically, took a trip, and they weren't gonna make it. They didn't wanna do uh, all the, the, the alternative stuff. Instead, she did an acceleration of the death benefit and took a trip around the world with all 15 people in her family. And, um, and it was just, she just wanted to enjoy it and she wanted to have like just this amazing send off party. So no matter where you are on the spectrum with that, um, just know that being able to have the acceleration of the living benefits of, of, through the accelerated benefit riders inside of these policies, whether it's whole life insurance or index universal life, there are term policies that you can do this with, um, all these things, it is, it is something that I think every single person should have as part of their financial plan. So the third pro, I love I loved to talk about this one, I call whole life insurance the BASF of the financial world. Now, what does that mean? If you're a child, I was born in the 80s and I grew up kind of in the 90s, that were my formative years, so to speak, and I remember watching football every, every Sunday, or not every Sunday, but pretty often, and there were always these commercials, BASF, we don't make the products you buy, we make the products you buy better, right? So they talk about at BASF, we don't make the paint you make, or the paint you use, we make it brighter. We don't make the fishing line, we make it stronger. We don't make this, we make it that, right? Like it's always, we make it better. That's what we do, that's what we focus on. So whole life insurance isn't gonna make, isn't gonna be the best investment. It's going to make your investments better. Because when you have your financial structure properly, financial life structured properly, and you have whole life insurance at the foundation of it, it allows you to show up differently and it gives you a buffer to be able to handle all the ups and all the downs. And when you have that emergency fund, an opportunity fund in place, you can go out and actually behave 
like a really savvy investor in all these other ways and not have to make poor human decisions around our money because we got this foundation built properly. And so whole life insurance is not the best investment. It's just going to make all your investments better. And so for the fourth and fifth, I'm just going to lump these together bonuses or, or pros of life insurance, cash value life insurance is the fact that you're going to have tax free growth and you're going to have tax free access to that money whenever you want it on a contractual basis. And nobody can tell you no, and you're also going to have a tax free death benefit. So the tax free nature, the benefits written in the tax code. And I I've done videos on why this is the case. I could talk another 20 minutes about why this is the case how we've come to this place where it seems too good to be true. Why would there be all these tax benefits around life insurance? And the one short thing I'll say, and if you want to go do it, check out the card in the link above right here, go, go watch this video. The one thing I'll say is it all goes back to the institution of the federal reserve and JP Morgan and all his banking crony people that, that were launching the federal reserve. They all held their money inside of whole life insurance at that point in time. So while they created a system that duped the rest of the world to think that they should just put their money into banks and trust banks, they kept the majority of their personal money inside of whole life insurance. And this is one of the reasons that banks are the largest owners of properly designed whole life insurance in the entire world. And so if the banks are doing it and they've convinced you to keep their money there, but they're keeping their money in whole life, that might be something to contemplate. So that is it. That is the pros and the cons of cash value life insurance. If you have any questions at all, comment in the comment section below, and I will do my best to engage with every single one of them. And if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe, make sure you hit that bell, because I'm telling you with everything going on in the world right now, the information that I'm sharing, I'm literally getting inspired by the stuff that I'm reading every single day that I'm watching every single day that I'm researching based on the economic environment that we're in, in a way that can serve you best. So my hope is that you are able to pull something valuable out of every single video I film. And so until next time, have a blessed inspirational day. We'll talk soon. See ya.